In this video, we're gonna take a quick look at Synology Surveillance Station. And at first, what we're gonna do is actually add a camera to Synology Surveillance Station. And then afterwards, we're gonna take a look at an overall review of it and why I think that certain people should use it and why I think certain people shouldn't. But overall, Synology Surveillance Station is an NVR. What that allows you to do is record video footage from security cameras onto your Synology NAS. It's its own package. And after you install it, you're actually navigated to what appears to be a different operating system, but it's actually just a different package. Now at the core of Synology Surveillance Station is the actual cameras themselves. So the first step is generally to get all of your security cameras connected up to Synology Surveillance Station. And after that, you can really customize a lot of different features inside of here. I have written instructions on how you can do basically everything inside of here, and I'll leave a link for that in the description of the video. But we'll quickly look at how you can add a camera so you can at least understand how that piece works. So if you open up the IP camera icon and select add, this is where you're gonna add a security camera. Now there's a few things that I wanna point out here, and the first is that there's generally a setup that has to be done on the security camera itself. Now from a technical perspective, everybody kind of looks at this step differently. So I can really only tell you what I did. Um, and what I did is I have my own camera VLAN on PFSense, which basically allows me to ensure that all of the traffic stays local. I block internet access, I can access it from my local devices, and from outside of my house, I'll connect to my VPN, which will then allow me to view my security cameras. You can do that or you don't have to do that. I would say that generally it is advised to do something like that because these devices aren't known for having the best security. However, that's not to say that you have to do it. You are free to do whatever you want. I just wanted to make that clear. The reason I'm mentioning that is because the first step most of the time is to set up a static IP address for the cameras. So if you have your own VLAN and you're separating it onto its own subnet, you can set up the IP address there, but overall, you just have to come into Synology Surveillance Station, give it a name, set the IP address of that camera, make sure the local subnet you're on can access that, and then you're gonna go through and you have to modify some of these settings below. So when you set up the camera, you'll set up a username and a password, and that's easy to go through. But the brand section is where it gets a little more difficult. And the reason it gets a little more difficult is that a lot of the uh, cameras that you purchase are actually manufactured by somebody else. So I'm gonna be adding an Anki camera here, and I'm going to explain why a little later. This is my favorite camera for Synology Surveillance Station, but it's actually a rebranded Hikvision camera. So you kinda of have to know what type of camera it is, and then you can go in and select that brand and model. So if you search here for Anki, you're actually not gonna find anything. However, it is a Hikvision camera, and a lot of times you can find out what it is based on when you first log into the device. If you log into this Anki camera, you'll see that it's actually a Hikvision web page. So that kind of makes it a little easier. But you do have to select the correct brand if OnVIF is not used. OnVIF is definitely the easiest way to do this. And most cameras use OnVIF. So everything I just said is assuming that you're using a camera that doesn't support it. However, OnVIF is the easiest way to do it. So if you just leave everything as default, enter in the IP address of the camera and select add, you should be able to go in and authenticate and then the camera should be added to Synology Surveillance Station. Now there are a bunch of settings that you can modify inside of here and you really should go through for each camera and modify those settings. But that leads to the next point, which is really that the biggest downside of Synology Surveillance Station is that you have to purchase additional licenses if you wanna use more than two cameras. So you get two free licenses and anything more than that, you have to go through and purchase additional licenses for. And truthfully, they're not really that cheap. And unfortunately, you have to buy them if you wanna use more than two cameras. So this is by far and away the absolute biggest downside of Synology Surveillance Station. And I was really thinking about how you can kind of be efficient with these because I don't dislike Synology Surveillance Station, but if you're trying to build a powerful NVR for your house, you know you, you could potentially get to eight to 10 plus cameras, and if you add the license costs up, it starts to make more sense to go with a different software. 
While I've tested Synology Surveillance Station, I use Blue Iris on a day-to-day -day basis, so I want to be very clear about that. But Blue Iris allows you to go through and add as many cameras as you want, and the actual cost of the application is roughly around the same price as one camera license for Synology Surveillance Station. Now, the downside of going that route is that you have to have a device to run it on. So I have a Proxmox hypervisor, so I just virtualized a Windows 10 operating system and I installed Blue Iris on top of it, and it works great. Um, however, I had that device and I was able to install it. There's also a pretty big learning curve to it, though it's 100 times more powerful than Synology Surveillance Station. So I'm not saying that to dissuade you from using Synology Surveillance Station, but you have to get creative. And the way that I think you can get creative with Synology Surveillance Station is to use a dual lens camera. So the camera that I'm currently adding is the Anki NCD 800. And this is the way that I decided on this camera. On the Hookup YouTube channel, he went through and compared all of these different dual lens cameras, and this was one of the ones that he classified to be the best. Now, depending on the type of cameras that you're purchasing, the NCD 800 can be a little expensive. But Anki does have an FCD 600, which is a little more budget friendly. The overall point here is that both of these cameras, or really all dual lens cameras for that matter, will only consume one Synology Surveillance Station license. So if you place two of these around your house, you'll get the output of four cameras. Now that's how I think that you can get around some of these licensing costs. Not so much that you, know, you can totally get around them, but you can strategically place these and get the overall output of two cameras using one Synology surveillance license as opposed to having to consume two. Now with that out of the way, I want to kind of explain who I think Synology Surveillance Station is for. If you have a Synology NAS, you should probably try out Synology Surveillance Station. If you plan on using less than two cameras, you should definitely try it out. It gets a little more complicated when you want to use more than two cameras because the licensing costs can get expensive. And you also have to look at it like if you include the license in every single camera that you purchase, you could probably get a much better camera if you put those licensing costs towards the camera itself. And that also leads me to the next point, which is you kind of start off with a few cameras here and there, meaning you have an idea in your head that you might want, say, four or five cameras scattered around your house or your property. And then what ends up happening is you keep adding and adding and adding. And that's the worst case to be in with Synology Surveillance Station because you have to keep purchasing new licenses with every single camera. Now, the only comparison that I have is Blue Iris because I've only used Blue Iris and Synology Surveillance Station. But Blue Iris, you can add as many cameras as you want for the most part at least in the realm of a regular homeowner. Um, it's also a lot more powerful. You can do a lot. I have a few tutorials that I'll leave in the description of the video uh, on Blue Iris, but I have it hooked up to Home Assistant. I get motion notifications with uh, you know, a live option and a pre-recorded clip. And I'm not saying you can't do you know, some of this stuff on Synology Surveillance Station. I'm just saying that it's extremely, extremely powerful. But with that power comes complexity, and it is a little more difficult to set up. It's just that when you start comparing it on a financial level, assuming that you have the hardware currently to run Blue Iris, it is just a flat out better product. And with that said, the final category of people I'll have is the people that don't have a Synology NAS and would have to go out and purchase a Synology for surveillance station. And for those people, it's just something that I, I really wouldn't recommend. Um, it's not to say that it's, it's a bad product. It's not to say that you won't be happy with it. It's just to say that there are better options, in my opinion, on the market. And this is really geared towards users that have a Synology NAS already and would like to build an NVR on top of it rather than going out, purchasing a Synology NAS, purchasing the hard drives, the cameras, the licenses, et cetera. Before you know it, you're going to be spending a lot and the actual output of it is not going to be as good as if you put that money towards a Blue Iris system or something comparable. 
So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions on Synology surveillance system, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.